Hi, welcome to my channel, Jabbertang. Here is another topic in Calculus 3, Equations of Lines and Planes. As you could see from the graphs, we are going to go be in three dimension. We're not talking about lines and planes and x, y, plane, all right? Uh, I have a lot of notes for you, but uh, my plan is to make it less than 30 minutes. Uh, so it's going to be lectures with notes and examples. So here we go. Let's get into it. Vector, parametric, and symmetric equations of lines. What's interesting is the following. Seeing this graph, this is a line L in 3D. To represent every single point, we're not going to use algebra as, you know, 5x plus 2y equals 7 and things of that nature. We're using vectors. So if you have a point to start with, which is point P sub 0, X sub 0, Y sub 0, Z sub 0, you could point to it by a vector called O P sub 0. That's called R sub 0. All what you need to write an equation of a line like L is a point on the line and a direction vector. This vector tells you where you're going. In algebra, we keep saying to students, all what you need for an equation of a line is a y-intercept and a slope. There is more into that, but that's not our topic. So if you have the slope and the y-intercept, pretty much you're done. You just need to write the equation and you're done in slope or slope-intercept form. In 3D, using vectors to write a line, you need two things. You need a point and you need the direction vector. Keep that in mind. Now here is R, which is OP. OP is called R. Now if I have the start point, and if I could point to this point, and I could point to this point, I could point to this point, and this point, and this point, and backwards, this point, and this point, and this point, I'm representing the line. So this is a sample point, as generic, that is a mover, that represents all the points on this line. It's in general, X, Y, Z. So how can I describe that? Easy and simple, trust me. The vector A is P sub 0 P, right there. This is a formula, and thus more details. Here's the formula. Take a look at the formula. R is to represent any point on the line. You could see that, all right? Using vectors, addition, you could go this way, and this way you will get R. I call it shortcut sometimes. So addition gives you the length or the vector that gives you the other two lengths or two vectors that adds up to as you can see this is should have an arrow r sub zero plus a will give you r that's r well this is r sub zero it's already there but why they did not write a they wrote tv that's what's interesting this could be seven in length of course has an angle this could be 14 so to point to this point i need twice v in the direction of v that's the scalar t as simple as that so if you want three times the length of v three will replace t if you want to go back seven units and point to this one you'll say minus 1t 1b sorry 1 for t so minus 1v okay the triangle law for vector addition gives that r is r sub 0 plus a r sub 0 plus a but a is tv it's not the same length as v it represents scalar multiples of v keeping the same direction all right 
that's A. So A is T V. Since A and V are parallel, A and V are parallel, A is T V. As you can see, I'm repeating myself. This is V with the components A, B, C. It's called the direction vector. And T V will be the scalar multiplied by V T A T B T C. Okay, that says a lot. So R which represents a generic point that represents all the points on L to reach to it and point to those points you're gonna say R sub 0 plus some scalar multiplied by V that's pretty much it okay that's called the vector vector equation of a line okay let's move on find a vector equation and parametric equations now, I did not talk about parametric equations, but we're going to mention it right here through the example, because I'm trying to save you some time. That passes through the point 5, 1, 3, and is parallel to the vector i plus 4j minus 2k. This is kind of lengthy to read. That's not my type to understand math and do math problems. I like to see things. So what they're talking about is find the equation of the line that passes through a point given and has... A direction vector because they use the word parallel to so pretty much like our notes r sub 0 will point to this point as a vector v the direction vector r equals r sub 0 plus tv that's r sub 0 that's t times v to the math and pretty much you're done the vector equation rewriting this with i j k components you could leave it that way that is a vector equation in detail now what do we mean by a parametric which i postponed from nodes to save you some time this is called parametric equations so it's kind of like pieces of information combined together they represent the line there is no i, j, k in it, all right? You take x equal, you take y equal, you take z equal, and that's called parametric equations. Now, how do you find two other points on the line? Simple. If these one, as I said, like earlier, 7, 14, and so on, 6, 5, 1 is on the line. How do you do that? Well, look, if these one, that's 6. If these one, that's 5. And if these one, that is 1. Same thing for t equals negative 1. You could put t equals 5, 7, 20, whatever you want. So we have the vector equations. And we have the parametric equations, which is called scalar because there is no i, j. To summarize my first or f uh, the last previous slides. Uh, we talked about vector. We talked about parametric. The third one was on my list is the symmetric. Here's the symmetric. Since we have this, x equals x sub 0 plus t a, when you break it down in general as parametric, that's one more time, parametric in general. Imagine if you solve for t. They all have t, right? To solve for t here, you get x minus x sub 0 move to the other side so you have x minus x sub 0 divided by a but that's going to equal the same thing that you get out of here and the same thing that you get out of here as a special case imagine if a is 0 I'm not going to divide by 0 here so I'll go back here this is 0 so I have x equals x sub 0 I don't have to solve for t there is no t to solve for and the other two will stay, just in case. Here's an example. Find parametric equations and symmetric equations of the line that passes through the points A and B. And after that, at what point does this line intersect the XY plane? We need to find parametric equations and symmetric equations. But what did I say earlier? You need a point and a direction vector. They did not give me a direction vector. But we could make it. 
That's my direction vector. You go 3 minus 2. And you keep doing the same thing. Now I have a direction vector. So now I have a point. If I pick on A, that's my P sub 0. And I have a direction vector. After that, it's just like simple math. Just do the rest. You start here. 2, 4, negative 3. 2, 4, negative 3. And you add T times, T times, T times. T times 1 t times negative 5 and t times 4 and symmetric equations are x minus 2 over 1 x minus x sub 0 over a y minus y sub 0 over b that's my b that's a b c and z minus z sub 0 which changes to plus 3 over c which is Okay, at what point does this line intersect the x, y axis? The plane that is flat like a floor. That's how I kind of sometimes describe it. Symbol. To find the x, y intercept with the to find the intercept with the x, y plane, you just set z equal zero. So you're not going up or down. When you put zero here, I have three fourth. Multiplying everything by a common denominator to get rid of that and solving for x and y, moving things around, just using basic algebra. You get x equals 11 over 4 and y equals 1 out of 4. I don't want to do the algebra here because I want to save you some time. I want to highlight the lecture notes and show you how you start and how you finish. Okay? So let's skip the algebra steps and move on. Here's a comment. I could skip that, but it doesn't hurt. It adds up and I'm doing it quick for you. The vector equations and parameter equations are not unique. Okay. Here's our line, the two points and the vector, the direction vector. Using P sub 0 and the V1, negative 5 and 4, Doing the math, this is what I get. Using this as p sub 0, you're going to have to have 3, negative 1, and 1 here. Here, I have 1, negative 5, and 4. Uh, sorry, uh, a, which is 2, 4, negative 3, my start point. 2, 4, negative 3. So if you write this as a start point, it looks like, oh, you have a different answer. No, it's not. I'm starting somewhere else. It doesn't matter. Using P sub 0 as A and using a vector that is twice the length of this, look, it's not going to make a difference. So earlier, if you multiply by 20, now you only need to multiply by 10 because your vector is longer, the one that you use. So... 2, 4, negative 3, 2, 4, negative 3, plus t times 2, t times negative 10, t times 8. Looks different than 1, negative 5, and 4. Same thing. The scalar will be required differently to reach to the same points that you want. I thought it's interesting to know. So that's why I have it quick and what? It took maybe like 2 minutes to show. Show that the lines L1 and L2, I'm using different colors to highlight my notes and make it lecture notes clearly to the point. My focus on my videos, as you can see guys, delivering clear content, saving time from reading the book and highlighting and underlining and rewriting. So I'm doing that for you. So I have two points, two lines. They want me to show that the L1 and L2 are skew lines. What skew lines? Skew lines means they're not parallel. And they don't intersect. That means they're in 3D. Imagine if they are in 3D but they are parallel. You twist one, let's say 45 degree, they become like a like an X. But they're far from each other, they're not touching each other. Uh, here's the formally speaking about skew lines. Are skew lines 
that is they do not intersect and are not parallel they do not lie in the same plane how do i do that well the lines are not parallel if you look at the components they're not proportional okay well if they intersect of course if they're not parallel you might think that they might intersect well they don't all right if you try to use algebra i'm writing them displayed this way x equals x y equals y and z equals z you want to put this equal to this and this equal to this and this equal to this this is called substitution rule solve the first one and the second one using substitution or elimination method in algebra i got t equals 11 over 5 and s equals 8 over 5 well these values they don't fit on the third one so they don't intersect so if you find an answer here that fits here and here and here that's the point of intersection it has to be like on all the three lines okay or the components vector and scalar equations of a plane here's the plane and here's the origin it doesn't have to be like fully aligned parallel to the xy plane but i'm trying to graph it in my way different than the book uh the book is tilted too much i think this way is more clear so you're pointing to point p sub zero pointing to p which is xyz doesn't have to be here could be here I get this right here this is called difference r minus r sub zero r minus r sub zero is a vector pointing to r if you remember that from the first videos this is n normal normal means perpendicular you see this right here to the plane going back to the dot product we know that the dot product between this and this is zero if you rearrange this i got n r and dot r sorry equals n dot r sub zero and that is actually the equation of the plane that's it that's how you do it this figure says it all n r n dot r equals n dot r sub zero here is n with the components a b c here is r here is r sub zero and if you do the math r minus r sub zero is x minus x sub zero n is a b c do the dot product we know how to do the dot product this form now is the scalar equation of the plane through the point p sub zero with the normal vector n a b c so you have the vector form this is the vector sorry this is the vector form and this is called the scalar form and it all came from doing a dot product between these two vectors so what do you need for a plane you need a point on the plane and you need a perpendicular or orthogonal or n find an equation of the plane through the point with the normal vector n i'm highlighting the main information you need a point and you need the norm or normal and after that we're going to sketch the plane so as simple as that this is the components of the normal two and three and four coming from here x minus x sub zero y minus y sub zero they're coming from here and so on just do the algebra and that should do it as simple as that to find the intersection or the intercepts and sketch also it's simple to find the x-intercept i'm gonna put y and z equal to zero 
2x equals 12, so x equals 6. Same thing you do for the y-intercept. You do x and y, sorry, x and z equals 0. For the z-intercept, you plug in x equals 0 and y equals 0, and I got the numbers. A quick sketch. We intersect the z at 3. We intersect the y at 4, a little bit longer. We intersect the x at 6, a little bit longer. This is the first octant view. And the first octant, I'm going to cross here, here, and here. So it's going to extend beyond this wall and this wall and this floor, if you call it that way. But at least it's a quick start of graphing 3D planes, all right? Scalar equations of the plane. So when you multiply this and simplify it, you get a is times x minus 0, which is with the minus sign, and those are constants. Grouping them all together, they want to call it d. Just it's a cleaner look. That's it, pretty much. This is called the linear equation in x, y, z. So for the plane, we have two forms, the vector form and the linear form which is right here, which is interesting to look at it because it's linear in X, linear in Y, linear in Z in three dimension. That's going to be a plane. So it's not going to be a curve or a surface that moves up and down or curves up and down. Two planes are parallel if their normal vectors are parallel. Imagine if these two vectors are parallel. That means, let's say like they're horizontal. This will have a normal up, and this will have a normal up. They're going to have a two point in the same direction, so the angle between them is zero. You move this a little bit. Imagine if you move this like up, 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 up. The angle will increase, and the normal will move with it. It's normal, and the angle will transfer or correspond up here. Kind of makes sense, right? I have two planes. They are parallel. Why? Look at the components of the normal for each. 1, 2, negative 3. 2, 4, negative 6. As you can see, the normals are proportional, which means they're pointing in the same direction, which means the planes are parallel. Now, if the two planes are not parallel, then they will intersect in a straight line, as the figure shows, and the angle between the two planes will be determined by the angle between the normal vectors, which makes sense. Our last topic for this video is distance between a point and a plane. This figure says it all. I did my best to make it so clear. That's why I called my videos lecture videos with examples. Uh, reading this, getting all of this out of the book, uh, it takes time for me, as you can see, to write and clean the notes. Uh, hopefully you understand, guys, and you appreciate that. Let's get into it. So you need a point and you need a plane equation to find the distance between this point and the plane. You could find any point on the plane by just plugging some numbers. Just just by finding a point. In uh, algebra, if you have x plus 2y equals 7, you could find a point on it. You just play, plug in y, you find z that corresponds to it, and you're done. Same thing here. So we are, we need a point and a plane equation to find the distance between it. That's d. So we go ahead and find p sub 0 on the plane. Then the graph as it shows. I could point to this point from somewhere where P sub 0 is. And I will call this vector vector B, which is P sub 0, P sub 1. Using scalar projection from previous video lecture, I could project this vector on the side of this right triangle. I have a normal here, which I could read from A and B and C. All right. Instead of putting the normal here or putting the normal here, I'm putting the normal where the projection or the scalar projection is. All right. 
Now, if you do the scalar projection of this vector here, magnitude, you're done. You're finding the distance. And this is the distance formula. So it involves the ABCD, the ABC, and D, the constant. X1, Y1, Z1 will be coming from the point. And this is the normal. And that should do it, where D is so-and-so. This is more in written notes to explain this. Take a look. I talked about P. And you know what's P. The distance D from P sub 1 to the plane is equal to the absolute value of the scalar projection of B onto the normal vector N, A, B, C. Of course, if this is short, it's going to extend and it's going to cover this whole length. The scalar projection, we had it before. It's a dot product between N and B, N and B divided by the magnitude of N. That's how the formula was developed in a previous video. We know how to do the dot product between N and B. I have B and I have N, which is A, B, C. This is a dot product. Magnitude divided by the length of the normal and that's it. A cleaner look for this is on the left. Find the distance between the parallel planes. To make this so clear, I took the time to graph them for you. I don't have to graph this on top and this at the bottom, but that's one way to do it. We know to find the distance, it's like finding a distance between a point and a plane. I don't have a point here, so I found one. How do you find a point right here? Symbol, make it easy on you. I plugged in 0 for y, 0 for z, and I came up with half for x. That cancels, that cancels, then x equals 5, so x equals 1 half. Now I have a point. So I'm ignoring this plane for all. All what I need out of it, a point. To find the distance between this plane and this plane, it's like the same distance between this point and this plane. This plane is given to me. Just like the notes. So I'm trying to make it not upside down, like, you know, point here and the plane up. Doesn't matter. But to stay focused, here's a point on top. Here's a plane down here, and I have its equation. When you look at its equation, you could see the normal. It's 5 and 1 and negative 1. Keep that in mind. To find a point here, which is on the notes, what's called P sub 0, I just plugged in. 0 for x, 0 for y, I came up with negative 1 for z. 0, 0, minus z equals 1, so z equals negative 1. Okay, now we have we have the whole thing. The normals are 10, 2, negative 2, and 5, 1, negative 1. So the planes are parallel, so my graph is correct. D on the side, that's minus the package of a x sub 0 that's my a that x sub 0 that's my b that's y sub 0 that's my uh, c and that's my uh, z sub 0 look at the numbers where it came from you apply these numbers it's easier to see it with a graph guys or memorize it so I have D just follow the rules this is 5 I'm looking at 5 because we are here. We're using this normal, even though we could use this normal. 5 times half, that's my x1, that's my x2, that's my x3, that's a, b, c, minus 1, which is plus d. That was calculated on the side. Do the math, magnitude over the square root of, which is the length of the normal, and that should do it. Hopefully that was helpful. I know it's a little bit fast, but um, my main focus is creating clear content so you don't have to read textbooks and understand the formulas and where they came from and how to apply it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, 
hit the like button and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thank you.